Hey there friends, it is me, Mike Harmon, or HL Mod Tech, and I'm here today with the A10M. It has just arrived, and what better time than the holidays to do an unboxing and an assembly video. So, let's get cracking. Alright, did we do it right side up? That would be yes, although it did shake out just a little bit. So, A10 is going to be a mixed extruder. You can see they're both already attached, which is awesome. Oh, this, everybody, is Ernie. He wanted to see as well. Ernie, say hello, world. World, Ernie. All right, out of the way, bud. Power supply. Mouse pad. Cables. Screws. The uh, display. And the pre-assembled base. And dual extruders. Before we attach anything, let's make sure we've got our tools ready. You can see I've already got my M45s put over here in a little magnetic case. And I just want to dig through my parts to find the wrenches. Because everything is a lot easier when you've got the nice little tool set. So the big thing I notice... Ah, I could not find the instruction manual. Now we got that, so we can get to work. All right, so let's set our parts aside, find the assembly page. It talks about the different screws, shows us all the ones that we're gonna need. The first thing it wants us to do is use the M545 screws and the M5 spring washers to connect the upper and the lower frame. These are right here. They already have the spring washers attached, so we're ready to go. If this is your first time building one of these, this is your Y axis, and uh, you want to have the front of your machine out here, Y's, to attach the Z while you're at it, uh, because this is the easiest it'll ever be to reach in there and get that in place. I'm going to pull out the piece of paper. I've got my little M45s close, so they're easy to grab. Make sure I don't pinch any cables. Let's tilt it on its side so we can get access and put those screws right where they need to be. I like to just finger tighten them until they're all four in there. And then once you have them all in place and all your cables out of the way, then you can lock them in. So with these in, I'm just going to tighten them a couple turns, make sure that it's really attached. Then I'm going to tip it over so I can do the other side as well. Because we all know that that first part of having the platform straight and flat is one of the most important ones. I'm going to do these a little bit at a time. Going from each side and from each corner so that we don't do any one side too much at a time. Next step is to use the M10 screws to attach the LCD. Before I attach it, I am going to put in the cable. I like to think of it as blue side up. And then simply clamp the little brown strip down. Do be gentle with these. Um, you don't want to break that because this does control just about everything about your printer. And then with that in place, you can move over to the location and use those number 10s. Once again, I'm going to... First, attach it with fingers, and then with that in place. All right, and once those are in place, we can tighten them in so they stay. Next up is the power supply. Simply go through where the blue strips are and use two of the M4 by 20 millimeter screws. I like to make this easier on myself by gently sliding the carriage upwards. I'm going to pull out the blue strip just using one of my Allen wrenches so I've got better access to those two screw holes. The little M4 screws are easy to track down. Let's see if we can get that one started. 
it's poking through just wonderful. And then let's find our little Allen wrench. See if we can tighten it up a few turns. Well, that was slick. That one connected. Let's go down and get the bottom one as well. Tell you what, this is the way printer assembly should go. If you saw my A10 video, the retainer for the Z axis came unattached the first time and it is already attached this time to keep the uh, Z in line. With the uh, power sign uh, supply in place, notice that still moves pretty slick. I can put in my little blue strip. Next up is the extruder and the filament guide. I chose to do the filament guide first because it's easier when I can set it on my workbench. These little guys go in the back and then what it does is gives you a nice straight out attachment later when we attach those. Find your wrench, tighten them in, make sure it's in there nice and sturdy because there's a lot of uh, weight hanging off this with the extruder. And you don't want that smashing on your super bed. Once you've got the first one done, do the exact same thing for the second one. With those in place, let's attach the filament spool holders. Make sure you've got those lined up because you don't want to uh, attach your filament and not have those twisted so they're strong. I can see that mine are still straight in the groove. So I'm going to loosen them a little bit. And then remember, as you rotate a boat nut, if it works correctly, it will turn and actually lock itself in place. And you should be able to see it turn so that you know it's connected. All right, friends, this time we get to turn the page over and we get to attach the Teflon tube to each extruder. Remember, I already skipped ahead and did the LCD display, so now I can connect the power connector. Here's the power connector coming out of the back. Let's make sure this feeds across. Super simple. Stretches just the right distance. Snaps on with one simple click. This is the big bundle of cables. I'm going to track down extruder. This is extruder one. All right, this is interesting. My extruders are labeled E1 and E1. So I really can't tell which is which. I'm going to just attach them using the length of the cable uh, that seems to make sense. E0 is the one that is shorter. And I'm also going to plug in the hot end connector at this point. All right, next step is to connect X. X has got a zip tie on it, so I gotta snip the zip tie. This is not in the kit. This is mine from a different kit. It is one of the few items that I think uh, GE Tech is missing the boat on. The extruder connects right here. Once again, raising this up a little bit uh, is a good test of how well it moves and gives you a little bit easier access when you're attaching that. End stop connects right here. My Y axis was already attached and all I need to do is attach the end stop. Now remember I did Z earlier, so all I've got to do is attach the stepper motor and Z is all attached. Alrighty friends, so there is the GEE Tech A10M totally assembled and ready to be run through its first test. Stay tuned, I'll see if I can whip up a video about that as well. You can also see uh, I've got videos about how to make your clips safer, and then there's also these connectors that you can find on my channel as well. I'm looking for some magnets, but I use this to protect the fan from parts falling off because I print a lot of smaller parts. If you found this video useful, please hammer that like button. If you got a question or a comment or even a suggestion, add it down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Mash that subscribe button and click the notification bell if you want to be the first to know when I make a brand new movie. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and enjoy that A10M.